The difference between forex trading and trading stocks or indexes, lots of traders are not sure whether they should trade stocks, indexes, commodities, forex, mainly forex and stocks. You know the difference between the two. And why do traders choose one or the other? In my personal case, I always go for both. Just trade all the instruments because they're all available and they're all there. Why, why are you hiding away from one? But I have found in many cases in the past that there's a lot of traders out there that, for example, if they're trading stocks, they won't touch for it. And it's quite interesting to note that there's this big difference between the two because if you're trading forex, you're trading forex. If you're trading stocks, you're trading stocks. I mean, it's as simple as it gets. But what's the difference between the two and why are traders so fussy about which one they actually trade? Hey, it's Rob Guilty. It's logical trading. Don't forget, guys, trading is risky. Very, very risky. If you don't like losing money, don't trade. Trading can be an extremely risky game. The difference between Forex and stocks is actually quite a simple thing. So let's start with stocks, right? Stocks are a company, nine times out of 10. Some kind of large business. A business that traders or investors invest into in the stock market as they sell a certain number of shares out to the general public or to institutions, companies, etc. Generally, bigger companies like to buy into stocks. Stocks, a good example of stocks is Apple, Nvidia, Coca-Cola, you know, companies like such. Retailers, banks, even mines, these sorts of big, big, big companies put their shares out there. You buy into the company with, with the proviso that the value of the company is going to grow over time and so is your investment. In many cases, stocks are great because they pay you dividends on a quarterly basis sometimes, sometimes on a half yearly basis, and you get a percentage of your, your investment back from those stocks in many cases. What's an index? Well, the stocks that you've been buying into, the top stocks, so if S&P 500, 500, maybe Germany 40, 40, you know, those stocks, those top, top, top stocks in that, in that index get put into the index, get chosen and put into that index, and it's a group of those shares which are now the value that you're purchasing. That gets changed from time to time. If a company falls off the bus, they get taken out and replaced by another one. So if you're buying an index, you're effectively buying into an index with those companies involved in it. But you don't get any dividends from that, but you are buying into value. If you're going long, if you're going short, you believe that those companies are going to go down. Which is why in most cases, for example, indexes like the S&P 500 keep on going up because those companies keep on gaining value over time. So your, your sort of default direction is long on those particular instruments. Now, that's indexes and that's stocks. And with stocks and indexes, you can trade with volume. You can look at the volume that's actually trading on any given day because you're looking at the volume involved in that particular instrument, stock, index, whatever the case. The difference with Forex is, Forex is effectively one currency pair trading against another currency pair. So for example, the US dollar against the Great British Pound, or the US, US dollar against the Euro, or the Euro against the Great British Pound, for example. Now these two currencies are valued against each other. So for example, when you go overseas, if you live in Britain, for example, you've got a Great British Pound. When you go to America, you have to exchange it for the dollar, and there's an exchange rate, and that's what a currency pair is all about. The currency pairs trade on the value of one currency pair against another. With that, you don't get any guarantee that it's going to continue in one general direction, for example, long, 
because there's not a company that's going to gain growth or value over time. You're just going to have this currency pair bouncing against each other, depending on how well that particular country's economy is doing on the day, or you know what what's actually happening in the world, for example, and it has an effect on Europe or it has an effect on the US or whatever the case. And that affects the balance of these currencies against each other. So effectively what you're doing is trading these pairs against each other. But that in itself is exactly the same as trading an index. If you look at the patterns in the market, the chart patterns, you're going to have the same result whether you're trading a currency pair or an index. Guys, do me a favor, go and check my blog out. You'll see I post a trade every single day. It's just an idea, go and have a look. 10, 15 seconds of your time, nothing more. Visit the secret blog. Free trade on there every day, which I post totally free. Guys, it's not financial advice, just a trading idea. On the blog as well, you'll see on the left, little PDF, free Forex book, my gift to you, asking nothing for it. But enjoy the trade every day. It's always nice to know what everybody else is doing, isn't it? So now that you've seen the blog and you've seen the trades, you can see that you get a trade every single day for free. It's just an idea. It's not trading advice. But the nice thing about it is I trade all of them. So some days it'll be a currency pair. Some days it'll be an index. Maybe one day it'll be a stock. Who knows? Whatever's out there on the day, I'll put it out there. I'm not putting all 10 trades out. I'm just putting one okay one great trade a day earlier in the day and we see how it goes you don't have to trade it like i've told you before trading is a 50 50 game sometimes it goes in your favor and sometimes it goes against you that's how it is it's just the way it is you can't change that because there's always a buyer and there's always a seller even in the forex market if you're trading a currency against a currency someone believes the US dollar is going to improve against the euro and somebody believes the euro is going to improve against the US dollar and that's just how it is. The danger of Forex, what you've got to be careful of is when there are announcements from Fed and stuff like that, it does tend to move them up and down pretty fast. I think one of the main fears for many traders about Forex has always been the situation of they trade on lower time frames and they move extremely fast. So be aware that if you are trading on lower time frames, whether it be on Forex or whether it be on indexes, it's going to move just as fast either way. So that's what puts people off Forex is they see the Forex moving so fast and they think it's a difficult instrument to trade, but it's actually not. If you move it on to the longer time frames, the hour, four hour, that sort of thing, it becomes just as easy to trade as the index. You've just got to follow the patterns, work with the support and resistance like I do, and everything's fine. So I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to check out the last video. Bye.